Good morning, Scott here. Hope you're well. Okay, the markets are trundling along this week. Um, yesterday, a few things played out, not too much. Today, there's quite a few things to talk about. So we'll get stuck into the charts and I'll let you know what I see in the markets. And um, this is all a part of education, forever learning. I've been looking at charts, Forex charts for 18 months now. And, um, and obviously the more you look at them, the more you learn, the more you recognize patterns and see how see how you expect them to play out in the future. I hope they will. With confirmation, of course. So let's go through some charts. And my trading view. That yeah, seems to be okay. Okay, start with Euro Pound. On the daily we have Okay, look at that. We had a really good high test, then it broke down to the daily 50, and it bounced off quite convincingly yesterday, quite a, a strong day. So that would give me a DDP, a daily direction prediction for up, long position today. What do we have on the hourly? We'll zoom into the hourly chart. And what do we have? We have Looks like most of the up of yesterday happened in the last, well, one, two, three hours, four hours of the day in the US session. That's fine. Um, right, so we have, what do we have? We have the breakdown, we have going sideways, and there's convincing break yesterday. So we need these convincing moves to show us that, yes, people are interested in in this currency pair, and there's a reason people are buying the euro or selling the pound, or both, of course, maybe. But it's got a big, strong breakout. We we'll do have FIB. We can see the 382 lines up actually with the daily pivot. Very nice. That's always a good confluence. Uh, so we like price to, it's already up here. So later today, euro pound probably won't set up probably for another uh, six, eight hours. Actually, I'm doing this quite early, so maybe even eight, ten hours. Um, so that will have you just go along sideways and pull back nicely to the three eight two in the pivot. And that gives that the one hour fifty plenty of time to catch up. So the one hour fifty will trend up as the day goes on. Uh, with the, the, the four hour fifty here, we can have is actually nine with our six one eight. So we put a stop just behind the seventy five which also lines up with the daily uh, S1, daily pivot S1 line. So if you're doing a, a pitch that show, you could also do that, but there's more potential here than a one-to-one, -one, I, I feel. Uh, where will the high go? Uh, well, there's not nothing really obvious to aim for. These highs here, which are a bit too low, and the next high, I'm looking at the hourly chart. So look at the hourly chart here, yeah, this last run. The next one. That's resistance might be this kind of level here, where these these are. Or maybe you just want to play it up to the S1, which will give one and a half percent. But there's plenty of room there to the upside. You could play it a bit, a bit further. Let's see how that one plays. So one good one for later. Zero Kiwi. Now this has been a, a funny looking uh, uptrend. It's just been going up. Up there, up days, down days, up days, down days, but basically just trending up pretty strongly. The Kiwi's been a bit of a, a downtrend for a while and the Euro's been quite strong. So hence this uh, quite strong move. All right, so why is this on my chart? Let's have a look at lower time frames. So we have this tight this trend line here, which is reasonable. For quite, for quite a while now, that trend line's been pretty good. Then it's broken and then come back and retested. It's been about along with that, that line. Now first it's acting as support, now it's acting as resistance. And now it seems to have broken down below the one hour fifty. 
So that is a good indication that we have a trend change. Um, do we have a trend change? High, high, uh, lower highs and lower lows. This high and this high. This isn't a confirmed high yet, so maybe not. We've got a double top thing going on there. Double top's always good. And we do have definitely a lower low. Even from these lows here, we have a significantly lower low now. So that's looking good. If we hit the four hour 50, touch that. So the, the fibs don't line up perfectly. It's gone just beyond them already. Hang down the one hour 50, and it's looking like it's about to break lower. Not the cleanest looking price action, but we are tra trading through the four hour 50. But we um, still a nice looking, still a nice looking uh, trade potentially. Right. And we can play it down to the daily 20 because I imagine this is very, very overbought. We hit this strong level here a couple of times. RSI showing overbought for quite a while. Nothing to see on the MACD, it's been such a strong uptrend. But the, the lower time frames are suggesting we're going to get some lower prices. So that's a good looking up. USD. Higher time frames. We've got this very strong trend line, which is rejected again, went down for the last few days. And that's looking like it's decelerating. So not too convincing. I wrote down here for a reason. I'll show you why in the lower time frames. So we've had this pullback, it's decelerating. It's just gonna keep on going down. Well, let's have a look. We've got this uh, trend line here, which seems to be a reasonable. Maybe it's a bit questionable. We could have that. Maybe we can have the trend line there. Could we have it up here? No, not really. I think the trend line is broken. Broken there, retested. That looks pretty good. We had a big break up and break down last night, end of the US session, and it's pulled back to retest this trend line and maybe it's going to go up again. This is Euro USD, not the not my favorite because it tends to be quite uh, unpredictable. This could be a long trade. Maybe not, it's hanging around here for a bit too long. Probably, don't know, keep an eye on it. It's below the one hour 50 for too long now, I think, for an entry. And maybe we need to see another break and retest for a, for a trade long. So I'll put that down into my watching. I should put it into my secondary. Uh, that's your USD, it's got a pound Aussie. So there's quite a few to go through. There's some nice interesting ones coming up actually, which I do like. So pound Aussie, we've hit this level a couple of times. Not too clear on the DDP from the daily. But if you look at the hourly, we have a double top thing going on here. Top here, top here. Break down below the one hour 50. That is a potential nice little short trade. Uh, stick that behind the 75. This is for an IBO, initial breakout. And again, the 4 hour 50, 1.66%. And it's like it's coming back soon. Pound Aussie, Asian currency in there. So it, it could well set up this morning, my time, next, next, next two or three hours. And that'll be a nice little trade down to the 4 hour 50, or you could push it low if you wanted to. That's a good looking one, pound CAD. This will be one for later in the day because of the, uh, there's no Asian currency in the pair. So, down day today, not that clear, but we do have a break. Let's zoom in a little bit, that's a bit too small. We do have a break of the daily 50 and then a retest with a bearish looking high test. So that's looking like it's a down to me. Uh, on the one hour, we have going down, trending down, breaking the one hour, breaking the four hour. We never really got our CBO, although it's set up for one, it never really happened. You could say it kind of happened there, but not, not nice, wasn't it? Wasn't one you want to take. And now it's broken up through the daily 50, this green line on here on this chart. 
and it's heading short again. And that's a nice convincing break low. We've got a we've got lower highs and we've got lower lows. Still in the downtrend, looking nice. Now maybe we'll get our CBO. So we do our fibs from here, from this last run, pull back to 382, which is pretty close to the pivot, that's nice. And this being a CBO, we can bring our stop a little bit closer, maybe just behind the pivot S1. Of course, you can go behind the 618. You can do that as well. And where we are trading style is. And then we've got a nice bit of room down to, I suggest around here where these highs are. There's plenty of potential, potential to the downside. So that's a nice looking trade. Don't care, hopefully it'll hang around here for another six, eight hours, pull back, and then go short. And Swiss. Probably not too dissimilar, very similar looking chart. Not quite such a convincing uh, high test on the daily 50, but still a bearish looking candle yesterday, looking like we're going short today. This looks very similar. We had our wedge pattern, we never really eventualized to, to the upside. We'll get rid of that now. So it's come down, broken the, the early 50, Nudge with the four hour 50, not really broken it convincingly. Now we've got a convincing breakdown last night. That's looking really nice. Fibs for this last run, 382 pullback, again lines up with the pivot. And we can play that as a CBO, because the four hour is here. So we can bring this stop down a bit closer. That's quite nice. And this has a better price target because of these lows down here, we can actually target these lows. So it's nice to take profit there for 2.8%. That would be a nice looking trade. That'd be one of my favorites as well. Pound yen, another pound one. Very similar price action. Break down below the, the daily 50, a high test yesterday, feel it finishing like a bearish candle. That's looking like a downside today. And similar kind of trend, trending down, breaking the four hour 50. And we had a kind of CBO, did a CBO play out yesterday, which I think we looked at. Break down below the one hour 50 and the four hour 50. Retested it here. Nice little entry. Didn't really play, didn't really go down very far. We had this nice pullback to the daily 50. Kind of resets it. Let's go again. So that's the kind of a continuation. Downtrend, pullback, and on we go. Right, so similar to the last one, we have FIB on the last run down, 382 pullback for the entry, uh, pound yen, so that could happen anytime soon, and stop behind 618 or your uh, R1, and that's short. Price target. Not quite so clear on this one. You could go to here, which is only going to give you 1.3, or you could go down to these lows, which would be a fair bit longer, 3.94%. So some in the middle, depending on a trade management style, but that's definitely a nice looking trade for later on. Pound Kiwi. Uh, what do we have here? We have a good break up, and it's kind of done an ABC correction. Down to the day 2050 zone, it seems to be. Very bearish day yesterday, which is implying they're going to get some more downside today. So that looks good on the daily. On to the one hour. Not such clean price action here. Break of the one hour 50, then just meandering up, 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 breaking up, now breaking down. So we did actually have a, an IBO last night. Don't know if anyone caught that, but it's not a very convincing one. But it did play out quite nicely, that's 4 hour 50 and just beyond. So what we're looking for now is, a, is either an IBOC, I oh, read the IBO, so we can't have an IBOC, discretionary IBOC, should it pull back to the hourly 50. So if this pulled back to the hourly 50 here and broke the 4 hour 50, that would be an IBOC because we're trading through the four hour 50. We have to trade through the four hour 50 to their price target. The 
stop would be about here somewhere and it should be about here somewhere. There's a one hour 50 trends down. If it takes a long time, and it sort of pulls down to here and then slowly comes back to the four hour 50 while the one hour 50 is caught up that then becomes a cbo so this time the entry will be at the four or 50 and the one hour 50 the stock can be tighter at the 618 and the same kind of price target so keep an eye on that one to see what, that, what sets up they're probably better pound pound uh uh, trades, but that's still a good possibility. And USD, pull back to the daily 50 and it's just trending down. So it's like it's going to continue to stay. Have a look. Okay, this looks nice because we have a break above the hourly 50, testing the four hour 50, and immediately a breakdown back below it. So that could. That could uh, make some people think we're going above the one hour 50, therefore we're going to trade it long. But we can see quite clearly that it's broken down. Let me test this trend line here. Maybe it's still going to go long. Thinking of the, how the other pair, pound pairs are on looking like, they're looking short. So I suggest this one is just a quick pullback to the 4 hour 50 and then the trend continues. In which case we can have a, we can't have an IBO because it's um, because the four hour fifty is behind us. This setup's called the ACB, Advanced Continuation Breakout. Uh, so the ACB B, so the ACB will be this pullback, which didn't look very nice. I wouldn't wouldn't want to trade that one as a pullback. The ACB B is the breakout of the one hour fifty and continuation. So. This is what this pattern is like an IBO, but the 4 hour 50 is behind us, not in front of us. So the run from the, the, this last run here, the, the fib from the top of this run down to the bottom, where it's actually hit this trend line, pull back to the 382, where the 1 hour 50 will catch up in a few hours. And that'd be a nice little trade short. The stop will be behind the 0.75. And then trade it short down to maybe these lows here. So like a good price target, two and a half percent. Very nice. See how that one goes. See how it sets up. Right, let's into the pounds. Kiwi CAD. What do we have? We're in a downtrend. We've had this trend line here uh, that's been holding quite strong for a while. We've now broken below this major level. And then we've retested it. It was a bullish looking candle yesterday, We've been, as, as in it's, um, it's a green candle. It's, it closed higher than it's opened. So it's looking slightly bullish maybe, but we'll, we'll see what the lower time frames give us, which is why I've got a down arrow on this. So like the last one, we've got the ACB. <clears throat> we've got the clear break out from the one hour 50 and the four hour 50, strong breakdown. Break of the trend line, you're still looking at maybe going for pip snatches for these sort of trades, and I'll suggest against it for various reasons, which you went through. Now it's pulled back through the one hour 50 to the four hour 50. And that looks like it could be a long trade, or is it going to be a continuation trade? I would suggest, because of the daily, pull back and test this major support level, that it's actually going to be a, a down low. How do we know? Well, we don't until we get a confirmed break of this one hour 50 and a retest. And then we can trade it back down to these lows. So if we get a stronger break, it's not looking like much at the moment. Just break down from here down to about here somewhere. And pull back. So it's a long tool. I'm going to use this tool here. So we go back down from here, down a bit further, back up to the one hour 50, and then we can trade it down to these lows. If it just breaks up from here, then there was an IBO we've just seen, initial breakout, and then we'll have to wait for it to break up about the four hour 50 and we'll trade it along. 
two different options there. Look how it plays out and we'll see what happens and we can make the decision accordingly. Kiwi Swiss. On the daily, we have a strong downtrend, pull back to the daily 20, and then it's downtrend's continued, bit of deceleration and a high test. So why have I got a down day on here? Because the same reason as the last one, we've had to pull back to the four hour 50. The hourly, 50, the hourly trend line has broken convincingly, went up to the four hour 50, and then broken down again through the one hour 50. This has already broken one hour 50 convincingly. So in the last hour or so, we've got that strong breakdown. Is it the best break and retest? It's not that convincing, but it is a break and retest. We've got a slight, slight gap there, gap there, gap there, and a pullback. So that could be you offering an entry anytime soon. And Go down to 75 and take profit. Can't go for the lows too short. We can go for these lows over here if we look down to the left. Put some lows over here. Go for those lows. So the trend continues. That could be a nice little trade short. Happening very soon. Give me USD. Similar kind of thing. Breaking down. High test yesterday as it pulls back. The 4 hour 50 didn't quite touch the 4 hour 50, but big legs run down. And this one will need to break lower. So, lots of these Kiwi pairs, because there are so many um, setting up, we can watch them all and get a feel for where the market's going to go. So, this one, this is a break and retest, but you can see the Fib right line up. If you, if you do the Fib on here, and it's down here. I've got rid of that. Okay, get rid of that. Right. So if we did the fib on here, we can see the 382 is right back here. Pivots here doesn't really make sense. It comes down here somewhere, lines up the one hour 50, and lines up the pivot. So that'd be more a nicer looking setup. Should pull back down here somewhere, then pull back. So and then we can try the short. So for this this pair, I'd wait for it to break down lower before pulling back. If it pulls back now, and you still think it's going to go short, then maybe Kiwi Swiss is the way to go because it has a, a better break and retest, and it lines up better with the, the one hour fifty and the three eight two. All right, good dollar Swiss. Uh, what do we have? The daily is giving us this level here, which has been tested a couple of times, been tested again recently, breaking down a little bit. Do we have anything on the MACD? No, we've actually got a higher high here. So MACD's, MACD says everything's good. So there's no divergence there, which, which is suggesting that it's maybe not going to break down. But we go to the hourly, the hourly chart and we can see we've got this, this trend line here, which is strongly broken last night. No other trend lines really I can see. And then last night we had this breakdown here, only for a two hours gap. Still, still a breakdown. And we do a fib. It's already pulled back last night, just past the 382 to the one hour 50. If you're going to trade this short, I wouldn't trade it from from an entry order, from here I'd wait for it to prove that that it's on its way and come back through this 382. So maybe a five minute break or a 15 minute break, as in a five minute 50 break. I'll quickly cover that because I haven't looked at that before. So here's the five minute chart. So we're looking to see it break, prove it's, it's going lower. And even the five minute break is not gonna be that convincing. Dollar Swiss, so we wanna trade this for six hours anyway. Yeah, okay, I'm talking myself out of this one. What I'm talking about the five minute break is if we get this candle closed here, we did pull down and then close convincingly for the five minute, that's a five minute break. You could enter on the five minute break and trade it short, but I'm not too convinced with this one now. 
Mainly because we've got another six to eight hours before we should get an entry on, on dollar Swiss and it's just going sideways. So see what the price action does. I've got a feeling might just pull back. If we get a nice break and retest later, we could check that as a discretionary second IBO. That's a 4.50. Okay, that's all the ones which I see setting up right now. I've got a few others which may set up later today or tomorrow. Let have a quick look at those. Strong run down, all the Aussie CAD on, on the daily, very strong run down to a level, which is down here, which I spotted a couple of days ago and we tested it. So do we have a short trade in here? I have a long trade in here. So let me get rid of that misleading arrow. All right, so back to the hourly. We've had this uh, double bottom. It's tested the one hour 50 already. This is a trend line I had in yesterday, so that must be convincingly broken. This one, I'll get rid of that one. This one here, you can see actually held. And now we've got a bit of a triangle. One, one, we've actually got a triangle there, so should we get, we've got an ABO. If we get a third test of the bottom, maybe even break of the bottom. And then something like that. That'd be a nice ABO. I like the break of the bottom here, the lows, because that takes out the shorts for the people that are uh, sort of the stops, takes out the stops for the people that are loading up on this. I'll put a level in here so you can see it. Um, my ABO line. Yeah, right, this is my computer's slowing down. Uh, I didn't miss the way out again. Right. So, well, three tests of this, this line to show it's really strong because we are we are predicting a change of trend without any real confirmation. Right, we've got lower lows, lower highs. This is a, is a higher, a higher high from this one, maybe, but not that convincing. Um, so we want to see this. Test this trend line again, and then test this level again. If we just test the level and it breaks up, that's good. We can enter on the five minute 50 break and trade it long up to a four hour 50. My preferred uh, solution is to break down here, break down quickly below this level. People who have jumped in this trade too early will get stopped out. Then pulls back up and then needs to put in a higher, a higher low before breaking out. If it just broke out straight away, I would miss it because I'm waiting for this higher low. The confirmation that this trend, this, this support level is holding, either at the support level or slightly higher. And then enter after that around here somewhere as an ABO entry on the five minute 50 break and then trade it along. The ABO is a tricky, less reliable setup because we are predicting a trend change that hasn't really happened yet. The other option is just to wait for this trade here where we have um, break of the 50 back to the early 50 and then trading it long so that's not quite what we're looking break of the early 50 and then we test the early 50. there we go so something like that that's a safer safer strategy so ibo break as you as one hour 50 just trends along break it come back test it and trade it long that could be one for later today or maybe tomorrow morning. Aussie Swiss, similar kind of thing. We've got a strong breakdown. Are we oversold? Mm, kind of. Not totally oversold, but it's definitely been going down for a long time now. So we've got this trend line here. This hasn't broken yet, so we need to see some kind of confirmation. Break of the trend line. Break of the channel and the one hour 50, pull back, 
And we'll try not to four out fifty. So later on, maybe. Start tomorrow. As you've done it. Very similar looking chart. Same thing. Oversold. Got to be trading it short. This one's had a good trend line break. This trend line is pretty strong. One, two, three, four touches, five touches, breakthrough, retest. That is a confirmed, well, not quite a retest, but close. That is a confirmed, uh, not a trend reversal, but the momentum to the downside is definitely broken. Now we've got to come up with a test here of the daily, the hourly 50 last night. Let's get rid of that. Break of the hourly 50 last night and vote straight down below it. So nothing, not no convincing break yet. We need to see this, like the last one, pull up through the hourly 50, up here, pull back to 382 in the hourly 50, enter around here somewhere up to 4 hour 50, stop. Now on the 0.75, which will probably be around here somewhere. That could be a nice one for later on. You're Aussie. Very strong uptrend. Hitting this level, which is quite a strong one. Uh, I think I've checked it out already. Bit of monthly, you can see testing it there. And testing the lows on it here. So that's a pretty strong level. But we've had no real deceleration or confirmed trend change yet. And what have I got over here? Okay, we've got a don't be trading this long, but you could. I wouldn't. Double top, looking like there. Trend line. See a break of this trend line. Break of the one hour 50. And uh, trade that short later. Here again. Uh, okay, we had a pull back, pull back to day 20, day 50 zone. Deceleration, profit deceleration, doji day yesterday. Looking like we could be getting some kind of long action today. On the hourly, uh, any trend lines there? Whoa, maybe. I'm sure there's somewhere. Over there. Not that obvious. But we can see the trend has changed. We've now got higher lows, this low to this low is higher, and higher highs, this high to this high to this high. Higher highs, trend change. Great. Now we want to see convincing break the one hour 50 and the four hour 50. It's like some kind of news event last night because a lot of these uh, charts are showing kind of act, some kind of action last night and then reversal. Or something happened in the news, and we'll look at getting a convincing break for the one hour fifty and the four hour fifty pullback euro yen. Asia currency in there, so that could happen uh, later today, perhaps, or maybe even tomorrow morning, and that will give us a nice little CBO. One hour fifty will trend up. Catch up the four hour fifty, break them both, pull back a few four hour candles, and a nice little long trade. So I like the look of that one for the future. Whoops, last one's Dolly again, which I just spotted as I left that chart that page. So this one I've been following for a while. It's been drifting up, really not convincing. Anything on the MACD? The MACD is showing to go down, so it's looking like it still wants to reverse. But not it's not doing much at the moment. Need some real good proof on the one hour. Uh, this is the old trend line we had that got broken. No real trend line anymore. But that trend line seems to be back in back in action again. Did a low test on it yesterday. Uh, wouldn't want to trade it long in any way, but waiting for it to, to convince us that we're going short, and that will be convincing when we get. Break down below the one hour fifty and that trend line. <clears throat> okay, back to the one hour fifty, and then we can trade that down to the four hour. So that's looking like it could happen as well. What if my video is going to work? My computer does seem to be struggling these days. The zoom and trading view seems to suck up all the memory. No, the video's not working. Okay, so there we go. Quite a few things 
possibly setting up today and a few things to look out for for the next day or so. I hope you found that useful, educational, interesting, and it'll help you improve your trading skills. Wish you all the best in the markets. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.